What person's gonna be in for your hand up? If we're if you're seeing at Mary and Campground tonight. <laughs> Welcome back. Today, we continue our journey back down the Dalton Highway after reaching the end of the road in Prudhoe Bay, Alaska and the Arctic Ocean. It was time to begin a new adventure from Prudhoe Bay, Alaska through Canada up the Dempster Highway to the small village of Tuktoyaktuk, Canada, braving hailstorms and wildfires. We stuck together through it all. This week, the road is once again familiar and the weather remains on our side as we retrace our steps and propel ourselves forward into the new and uncharted territories ahead. With a sense of deja vu and nostalgia, we leave behind the beauty and memories of Galbraith Lake. Thank you for joining us on another Alaskan adventure. Truck number three is coming. Copy, there's three trucks. Took a small direct hit from that one. With every bend in the road, we're reminded of the challenges we've overcome, the obstacles we've conquered, and the memories we've etched into the fabric of our souls. The excitement of discovery has faded, replaced by a comforting familiarity. It's like revisiting an old friend after years apart. There's pieces that are gone, but the warmth remains. There's a bittersweet feeling knowing that this part of our journey is coming to an end, and it's also a chance to appreciate what lies ahead, where we have created these unforgettable memories together. After bidding farewell to familiar sites, we make our way to Fairbanks to restock supplies and recharge before crossing into Canada for another big, big adventure as we prepare for this next leg of our journey. I can't help but feel a sense of anticipation as we go back up and over Adigan Pass one of the most breathtaking and dangerous parts of the Dalton Highway. This is the part of the journey where the weather can become unpredictable. Storms can dump snow here even in June and July, and avalanches cut off the supply route to and from Prudhoe Bay for days. This is a great place to watch for dull sheep, and we have seen grizzly bear, wolves, caribou, and muskox along this section of the journey. Adigan Pass traverses through the Brooks Range and reaches an elevation of over 4,000 feet. The grades are steep at 12% and you cross the Continental Divide at milepost 244. This road is also responsible for an average of 40 fatal crashes per year and a place where focus is important, and I do my best not to think about such things as falling boulders and avoiding wildlife. Just 
take a look at that guardrail. After that beautiful yet anxiety evoking drive through Adigan Pass, we take a stop at Marion Creek Campground, being one of our favorite places to stay just north of Coldfoot, Alaska. For $10 a night, you get a large level spot, tables, and firewood, but even better, some space to spread out or come together as we have been together over the last two weeks. This is where we take some time to help each other and slow down and share our stories of our adventures along the way and raffle off some prizes from the companies we trust in our van builds. And then for the first time in weeks since we left Seward, Alaska, we experienced a little rain. The sun had followed us while the rest of the state had experienced one of the rainiest summers on record. I just hit 30,000 miles today. But you know, it, it doesn't tell you how clogged up the paper filter mm -hmm. is itself. So if you have 30,000 miles, yeah, spend the $34 by the filter. Mm -hmm. And then you just take these off, the, these three these screws that are right here, and slide it back in. Gotta get the back up just a little bit more. So now we just push these in, screw all these screws down. Okay. And I just use this. You can use any type of yeah. tip like that, whether it's handle or power. Use power, just don't tighten too tight, don't screw it. is done for that and we'll grab the cabin filter. Okay. 
Okay. Great. So this one sits, throw this over to the side. And then up underneath here, oh, yeah, I'm gonna sit on that. Uh, there are a couple pens here. There's little tabs that pull down. There's a total of three of them. What are they tearing? There's a tab here, which is hit, this piece comes down. Yeah. There's one right here. <laughs> this comes down. And there is another one on the back side of that too. All right. So this this vacuum looking hose thing comes out and you see how this air clean this air cabin filter almost fell out? Yeah. All right. So just give that a pull. Oh, that's dirty. All right. The thing to remember is these holes mm -hmm. right here go, go up, up first. Hold up. And then so they're the ones that are going to go in. So the dirty part is going to be facing towards your passenger side. Okay. So it's just going to slide up like that and then just falls right out. So you can blow this out mm -hmm. with the same compressor and then you can actually get some of the stink out of it and then make it a little better. We're doing for the fun That's what I'm saying. She's okay. going to do this too. Oh, okay. Okay. So remember, two holes at the top yeah. go up to the to the towards that one. You saw the way it fell on. Okay. How do you get that angle? It's kind of you have to go straight. It has to be straight almost. You want me to get started and then see how and then you know how it goes and then you can flip it back in. change the cabin Three hours filter now. later. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> it's at least you'll, next time you do it, you won't have to challenge yourself with it and you're all set to go. Yeah. And if you got a compressor, and if you don't, you know, there's enough people normally on these trips that do. All right, remember which way this came in? All right, good. You want to put it in? Uh -huh. You're just stealing this darling. Just walking off with it. Yeah, Nobody will know. notice. <laughs> no. Where did you find it, Sherry? Um, somebody we volunteered with at um, Covenant House um, is a hunter and a fisherman. So mm -hmm. he gave us some salmon and some fair sausage. So we have a belated birthday, and then we have a birthday today, so we've got to sing. All right. Happy oh, birthday. Really want that. Right? <laughs> so I'm going to turn on the radio, and then we're going to sing happy birthday to Jesse, who's not feeling so well. All right, Travis. Start us All right, Travis will lead us. Travis. <laughs> he did earlier. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesse. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you feel better. Happy birthday.
birthday, Jesse. We wish you better. were here. Happy birthday, Kate. Awesome. I probably got this from you anyway, Jim. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Thanks. Oh. That was your birthday. That was your prize. So before we start with drawings today, what we would like to do is just go around the group one at a time, and we'll start here and work around. And we would like to know what is your favorite part of the adventure that we've been on so far. We're coming up on the midpoint. For some people, it's going to be the end point, but um, we're coming up on the midpoint for those that are continuing on to tuck. So what has been your favorite part so far? Oh, wow. There's been so many. Mm -hmm. I don't like plane rides, but I've gotten on two small planes so far. Um, just the whole thing. I, I don't think I can just pick one. Introduce yourself too. Oh, <laughs> I'm Donna from Montana. <laughs> That's good. I didn't know you were from Montana. Yep. We're about to Montana. Red Lodge. Oh, you know, I thought you Am I in charge now? I'm yep. Deborah. And uh, I think I would say the pinnacle of the trip thus far would be the flying over Denali and landing on the glaciers. Mm -hmm. But yeah. all the scenery, you know, has just been stunning. Yeah. I'm Ted from New York, upstate New York a bit. And I mean, I agree, it's hard. It's hard to pick one thing. It's just the scale of everything you see in Alaska. Mm -hmm. right? I think when we stopped along the um, Copper River and just near Chitna where they were fishing and it was just the whole scope of the river, the valley, it's just the scenery is like a sort of awe-inspiring. Uh, I'm Sherry Hersey from New York and um, the most uh, interesting part or part I enjoyed most was seeing so many rebels together <laughs> and bands and echoes together at once. That was um, cool. Yeah, because from in the Northeast you don't see many, and um, especially in New York we don't see many rebels. We can go months without seeing one. So. If we see anybody, we're honking and waving and having. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. Hi, my name's Nestor. I'm from South Florida. Um, the whole trip's been awesome. It's just scenery overload. But uh, I think yesterday the trip to Prudhoe, the Arctic Ocean. Um, Besides all the equipment and on the oil fields and all that, I found really interesting. But most wildlife we've seen in one short trip, I mean, muskox, reindeer, geese, a fox, it, it was just awesome. So I'm Mary. I'm from South Florida as well. And I agree with everybody about the scenery and the wildlife. I just want to throw in that you guys have really added a very pleasant aspect to my group here. I really enjoy you being with you and all your company. Farah, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Farah. Like I gotta stand up a little bit. <laughs> so uh, I think for me was the Arctic Ocean. We uh, did the dip yesterday and Denali. And most especially is uh, the group. I'm not into the whole group thing. Like that's why I disappear sometimes. But the biggest thing for me that was cool because I've like have a lot of mama bears and papa bears now. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I joke a lot about oh I need a man, but the guys are so helpful and even you know all the women very nice and you know you guys probably think that you have to take care of me because I'm little but you know I can handle it but thank you so much I appreciate everyone Thanks, for good job Karen. I'm Tim Ryan from Mon Monterey Peninsula and the thing that's awe-inspiring to me is just the expanse of everything and just how wide open it is and then you start talking to the locals and everyone's so independent and self-sufficient and it's just having a blast, and I agree too. The people, the, the this group here is terrific, and you guys are terrific for spending your time doing this with us. And, you know, thanks for showing us your state. Your home. Yeah. I'm Jan. I'm from Colorado, and um, the most fun I've had so far is fishing in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dan, I'm from Colorado. Um, I think the biggest thing that the people here are like really friendly. <clears throat> I'm not used to people that are that friendly when you, you know, the locals mm -hmm. and everybody, it's just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. and, and then the mountains are 
you know, I'm, we're around mountains all the time, but what you don't realize is just how big this is. When you get up on top, you know, you can see, see forever and you don't see anything except the pipeline and the, and the road. And, you know, and there's no buildings, there's no people, there's nothing. And it's just, it's wonderful. <clears throat> I'm Judy and I'm from California. And I think um, there's so many things, but uh, me, our, me, our first meeting in Seward was really special at that on the river because that was a really wonderful boondocking spot. It's the kind of place that I like to camp at. And I was wishing that we had more time to spend there, but we had a goal to go over to Homer to go oh, fly over to see the brown bear. So I wish I had more time there. But um, um, just the, the group of people that are on this trip are really incredible. Just a really nice group of people. And it's just so wonderful that you organized this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nico Sergio, Tennessee. Um, <clears throat> I like the scenery through the um, Agen Ag Ag Pass. Adigan Pass. And um, that's what we stopped today, and we spent like an hour just shooting pictures of that. So that's that's the highlight of the trip for me. Uh, I'm Corinne from California-ish. Um, <laughs> uh, I would say Denali and the glacier driving this 400 miles up into this untouched wilderness other than the pipeline and the road, it's incredible. Um, and especially hanging out with you guys because thank you for showing me so many things about my van I thought I knew, but I clearly don't. Um, and it's, you know, this is like a trip that I travel a lot by myself and this is just phenomenal and I've gone outside my comfort zone in many ways but I know you guys are there and as backup in case something happens so thank you for for being here and sharing this trip I have to say I'm Nancy Newman Newman Heine actually I I am very proud and of all of the single women who embarked on this journey I just maybe 10 years ago I would have done that um, last year <laughs> I don't know. It's really hard to pare down one particular um, highlight. I think maybe Denali had to top it. Flying out there and landing on the glacier was just amazing. Um, and I have to say one thing that I know my husband won't say. Years ago, his grandfather uh, caravan, the Airstream caravans, mm -hmm. and Larry now is caravanning oh. in a way, you know, with the Rebel Club, which is oh, that's interesting. It's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm Larry. Um, every, everybody has said, actually, everything. I think everybody feels that every day has been special. Every place we've been has been is special. All of everybody here is special. It's been just fantastic. It really has. There really isn't a single thing, because each day was a new kind of event, whether we're starting in Seward or yesterday in Prudhoe Bay, and everything in between was just great. And as we go north again, that too will be, up, up for most of us, unexplored, uh, unexplored territory. So that's also going to be really special. Looking forward to it. I'm Ken. I live near Sacramento. California and um, for years and years I've been reading all these adventure books and Alaska of course has more than its fair share and I've been always wanting to go above the Arctic Circle so this has been an incredible opportunity and uh, the other thing that's really nice is I finally got rid of the Starlink we've been carrying that thing around our, our odometer just clicked past 7,000 miles and I finally got rid of it <laughs> And I'm Nancy, also from Auburn, California, outside of Sacramento. Um, I guess I have to go with a couple of surprises, or three things. I was a little curious how this big a group might work out, and um, like all of you have said, it's been fantastic to meet all of you and, and hear about your lives and, and meet your dogs and, yeah, you know, all that fun dogs. stuff. I love those yeah. dogs, yeah. So it, it's really been and camp. The cat. And the cat, yes, Lies both cats. So camp has been more fun than I was wondering what it would be like. But the two other two surprises for me, um, obviously Denali was something, but I expected that to be. 
crossing over onto the north slope yesterday or two days ago or whatever day that was i mean it <laughs> i know what they mean when they say it takes your breath away because yeah. it was like really emotional getting over that pass and seeing it. it was raining we were behind you guys and um it was incredible so that was really a surprise the second surprise is a little bit what Dan said, we had to access some vet professionals and medical professionals along the way and um, despite being tourists getting them up at five in the morning to help us, um, <clears throat> totally nice, caring, great outreach, following up on phone calls, I mean just I really felt taken care of by Alaska so thank you again for sharing your state on that, it was, uh, it was a really pleasant surprise. <clears throat> I'm Rod from Montana. And I've always thought of Alaska as being the, the one place I wanted to go. And Attigan Pass was definitely the highlight for me. Um, and then seeing animals that we don't have in Montana, like the muskox and the caribou, so I could get that excitement that you guys have gotten when you see the animals we have in our backyard all the time. I got some of that excitement back, so that, that was good for me. I'm John from California and I just want to thank Jim and Cynthia for putting this whole thing together. Uh, we've been following you from afar for, for quite a while yeah. and it's, it's great to know there's a, a place like Alaska that Americans or anybody around the world can go to and it's even better to actually experience it in person and the wildlife has been so amazing um, I've just enjoyed every aspect of it, and uh, it's it's so great to be with everybody and, and experience everything that Alaska has to offer. Um, I'm Beth from Florida-ish, and um, <laughs> it's definitely the scenery in Alaska, Attigan Pass, the mountains just before the pass, <coughs> and all that scenery from the lake up to Dead Horse is probably my top three. Um, and that's why last year when we said we're coming back, we came back, and this year we're still coming back. It might not be next summer, but we're definitely, this will be a regular summer stop for us. Uh, my name is Patrick. I'm from Florida-ish, and uh, I'll echo what my wife uh, mentioned about the Attigan Pass. That, 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 that drive just brought us back, and last year we, we told ourselves, yep, we're coming back, so... Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> I'm Jackie from Tampa, Florida, and great to meet everyone. Great relationships that I hope I keep for a long time. And my favorite spot recently is Attigan Pass. That was amazing. And then Denali, the landing on the glacier was amazing, and Homer. The fishing opened up to the, what do we call that fishing? Well, they were snag fishing. Snag fishing. New to me, but awesome. So that those are my top three. Hi, my name is Todd Allen. I'm Jackie's husband. And uh, the best thing, I think, again, is the people that we met along the way. Caring, forgiving, all of the above. Uh, but also, uh, I have to say that the Kenine Tour was also probably one of the most fantastic bang for the buck. You know, six and a half hours going there, glaciers, humpback whales, uh, the sea, uh, mm -hmm. sea otters, sea lions, sea, you know, seals along the way, dolphin. Uh, it was just uh, a really well put together thing, along with being such close access to the spit that we were staying at and the camping adventures that you had. So, yeah, it, it just all of it and the, and the vastness of this whole country is just incredible. All right, we're gonna start with a $50 gift certificate to Overland Gear Guy. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> Who's gonna well, draw? I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna stir and then pick. Anyone in the kitchen? Oh, you're oh, throwing oh, on the crown! Oh, 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 no. oh, 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 no. It's the first two winners. Oh, oh, you're fired. Margarita. There's another one. That was, I actually have a flashlight. Okay. Is that one? That is yeah. one. Okay. All right. Last four. Six, five, zero, four. Oh, that's us. Yay. <laughs>
fifty dollar gift certificate to Overland Gear Guy. So Overland Gear Guy specializes in these pouches. We've had pouches in the doors of our vans, both front and rear, by Overland Gear Guy during our entire van travels, and we absolutely love them. So this is just sort of a sample of what he tries to do, and uh, so we've got three of these pouches to give away. Yeah, they make nice stuff. They make good stuff. Yeah, yeah they do. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Who would like to draw? <laughs> Come on, Tim. Yeah. Stir it up and then Don't stir up. Pick your own number. Pick your own number. Oh, I hope it's not mine. Pick Steve. Six, five, seven, one. Six, five, seven, one. Uh oh. Quick yep. draw. Oh, wow. Good work. Good work. Yay. That's your color, Larry. <laughs> Next up, we're going to do a front sway bar disconnect from Van Compass. So this is the kit to give you a front sway bar disconnect. No, ours is five. No, six, four, six, four. Ours is not six, four. Awesome. I didn't look. I know. Next. <laughs> 2019 to present Mercedes Sprinter hood line LED pod mounts, a set. From Van Compass. <laughs> Okay, we have got six four one six. That's me. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. What do I do? What year? Nancy, come on. No, but one of my chickens went in the fire. Oh no! Good <laughs> mount. Nestor will tell you. <laughs> Just bring it to Nestor. Thank you. All right, Sprinter storage cubby pouch from Overland Gear Guy. Six four five four. I think that's yours again. I think that's ours. We have five here. Five. Okay. All right, 2019 to present, Mercedes Sprinter Hoodline LED Pod Mount. From who? From Van Compass. Oh, you want me to read it, right? 6470. I think that, yeah. Nope. 6470. That's Jesse. Oh, yeah. You have to be here. Hey, birthday boy, are you there? Wake up, Jesse. Where's the ticket to Jesse won a birthday. Jesse, it's your birthday and you just won some. <laughs> Pedal control from Van Compass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <For real. laughs> Six five four two. What is it? Six five four two. It's Jesse again. Whoa. Here. Hey, birthday boy, you won again. That one's for Buster. <laughs> <laughs> Another tool bag pouch from Overland Gear Guy. There's a lot of tickets in there. Okay. Now you click and read it. 6512. 65 Steve. Steve! 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 Front sway bar disconnect from Van Compass. 6506. Six, 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 you guys are going to be off roading in no time. <laughs> Yeah. All right, 2007 to present Mercedes Sprinter Hoodline LED Pod Mount Set from Van Compass. Six, five, 
I got you a 6-4. 6-4, 3-9. 6-4, 3-9, my bad. 6-4, 3-9. Six, 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 all right. <laughs> 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 I got you another margarita coming. There you go. <laughs> you really don't want to do that. Okay. That's <laughs> doesn't really want me to do that. And another fifty dollar gift certificate from Overland Gear Guy. Yeah. Six four three three. Yes. Yes. <laughs> After some much needed rest at Marion Creek, we take a stop at Yukon River Camp, a stop along the way that we had missed together as Jim and I fell behind getting our van fixed in North Pole, Alaska. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. And then there were a few. Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, there are a couple still in the camp, I think. Yeah. Ken and Nancy and... Okay. I think that's the only one. Is that the only one left? Oh. And yeah. I know a lot of people went earlier because they're trying to go to Tina and stuff like that. And they want time to do laundry, so yeah, like, okay. Um, so today, it'll be a pretty mellow drive. We'll stop at the three stops we stopped on the way up. We'll stop at Finger Mountain, Yukon River, and then uh, at the sign. At the sign is where you can air back up for those that yeah. deflated. This is the part of the journey where the bonds began to form. As illness had taken over me, and I had very much felt like an outsider. It was good to feel good again. We made our way back into the city of Fairbanks to take care of chores and to meet up with an old friend that might be a familiar face to you. What are you doing Still there, Sotila? the blinker fluid. They're all getting rear-ended. Smart. Now just do the rest of it. We're at Yukon River Camp, about 60 miles left of the Dalton, and again, another beautiful day. What do you think of the drive so far? It's been great. How do you feel driving? I'm doing a lot better than I was, so that's good. <laughs> okay. Awesome, let's go inside. Today is one of our longer days of driving back to Fairbanks and we have stopped at Finger Mountain Yukon Camp this time and we didn't have to fly by it since we're with our group. It's been a beautiful day, a great drive, and we stopped and got some pie at Yukon River Camp. Construction season in Alaska. This is the one we blew right through last time. You know, probably like 20 minutes sitting here.
Um, when I drove through, because I had to drive the um, C-100 down, the drone, so Tom and I, we took off and drove down there, but it was kind of a power trip. The Thai house is the best Thai house in Fairbanks. I don't care what anybody else says, to include your Alaska Airlines friends, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> it looks pretty good. I wanted to try to So, what have we learned today? Our journey isn't confined to the road. It expands beyond the dirt and the asphalt and into the depths of our own lives. Just as we navigated the ups and downs and twists and turns of the Dalton Highway, we too navigated the uncertainties of our lives. In a world where the only constant is change, we find solace in the uncertainty, for it's within the unknown that we discover our true potential. As we continue along this path, we find ourselves wanting to capture every moment to freeze time and hold on to these memories forever. These moments are pure magic that we want to carry with us for eternity. Next week, we drop off my Ford Bronco at a friend's house and rejoin each other in the van as we continue north again through Canada and up and over the top of the World Highway to Dawson City, Yukon. To follow along on this epic journey, like and subscribe to see what happens next. And until we see you again, stay happy, healthy, and safe. We'll see you again soon.